holy crap, you clicked on this video, thank you. You don't realize how much it means to me that you're clicking on this and it not be a Pokemon video. Thank you. How's it going everybody? Chaotic Beatball here and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm doing a challenge in a series I've never tackled before here on the channel, but I'm heavily involved in, and that is Yu-Gi-Oh! See, we just had our first event in Master Duel, the simulator that was released last month, the Xyz Festival. Essentially a format where we can only special summon Xyz monsters from the extra deck. I'm sure many of you are, may not be familiar with this game, but to give a succinct explanation, Xyz monsters are monsters in the always accessible 15 card extra deck that can be special summoned by using two or more monsters of the same level. However, this mechanic is often broken in this deck and you will see why shortly. I challenged myself to a 50 game challenge, seeing if I could get a passing grade, if my win ratio is above 70% or 35 out of 50, I win the challenge, if not, I lose and I have a punishment, which will probably be something either A, embarrassing or B, funny. You know, something to keep you watching until the end. But first, I figured I'd go over the deck that I'm using for this challenge. We're combining two strategies that are often seen separately in the regular Master Duel ranked metagame, but it really fit well together in the Xyz Festival. The Leerlisk Monsters, a group of level 1 winged beast type monsters with two different types of effects. The first group of three can special summon themselves in the case of Turquoise Warbler, who can special itself if you control no monsters, then special another Lyrilisk from either the Hand or Grave. Sapphire Swallow, which can special summon itself and another level 1 winged beast monster, assuming you control another winged beast. And Barrel Canary, who can special itself and a Lyrilisk monster from Grave, but locks you into Xyz monsters for the rest of the turn. Hmm, I wonder if that's gonna be a problem in this one. The second group of two can activate a search effect when special summoned, in the case of Cobalt Sparrow who searches any level 1 winged beast on special summon, and Celestine Wagtail, a searcher for any Lyralisk spell trap, with this deck's only target being Lyralisk Bird Call, yet another search card for any Lyralisk monster. It also can special summon a Lyralisk with a different name in your hand than the one that you searched with Bird Call. These make up the backbone of a rank 1 spam deck, while also abusing the non once per turn searcher Lyralisk Recital Starling to help spit all five of these birds onto the board. And yeah, it kind of makes sense as to why they call this deck Bird Up. You guys are watching Bird Up, the worst show on television. The last part of this package is three copies of Tri-Brigade Fractal. This is normally used in a traditional combo that includes Link monsters in the normal deck and uses a couple of other members of the archetype, but Tri-Brigade's Fractal's exclusive purpose in this deck is to be sent from either hand or field to grave to send a level 3 or lower beast, beast warrior, or winged beast monster from deck to grave. In this case, it's mostly going to be used to send Cobalt Sparrow and acts as three additional copies of the card. Lastly, we've got three copies of Fire Formation Tanky to help us search out Fractal, so essentially we're playing nine copies of Cobalt Sparrow. But Tanky also has a secondary purpose, and that's to get to our secondary engine, the Zodiax. Notably, Lyralisks don't really have a normal summonable monster that gets a ton of value. However, using the Zodiac monsters, with only three main deck monsters in Whiptail, Thoroughblade, and Ram Ram, all of which are searchable by Tanky, we can have a normal summon that can end on a three material Zodiac Dryden, giving us yet another interaction for our opponent's turn while ending on the likes of Utopic Draco Future and Ensemble Robin, but we'll get to that soon. On to our defensive cards, we're playing seven hand traps, two Maxi, two Ash Blossom, one Nibiru, and two Infinite Impermanence. For those of you who play the game, you already know what these do, of course, but for the uninitiated and Pokemon fans that are just clicking on this because they saw that I uploaded a video, hand traps refer to disruptive cards usable on your opponent's turn, most of the time being monsters, with the exception to the rule being Imperm. Maxi allows you to draw a card every time your opponent special summons a monster, hence why it's banned in the TCG, but not in Master Duel, it's here at 3. 
Ash Blossom negates an effect that either adds a card, special summons from the deck, or sends a card from the deck to the graveyard. Nibiru, after five of your opponent's monster summons, contribute the entire field and special summon itself to your side of the field, while summoning a token equal to the attack and defense of all attributed monsters on your opponent's field. And Infinite Impermanence is effect negation for any monster your opponent controls while on the field, and despite being a trap card, can be activated from your hand if you control no cards. It's also a great card for helping negate spells and traps that are already set on the field. Since if you set it in the same column as your opponents, you can go ahead and flip it up, hit an opponent's monster, and also negate a spell trap that's sitting there at the same time. It's quite funny to watch an opponent that just disrespects this card, plays a spell card in the same column as it while having a monster on field, and you flip impermanence and they want to flip over the table. You're kidding! Judge, judge. Now with the hand traps, we're also playing two called by the grave and three cross out designator. These are our cards that help negate opposing hand traps, with called by being useful on cards like Max C and Ash Blossom, as well as other options that aren't in this deck, like Effect Veiler or Droll and Lockbird, while Cross Out Designator can be used to negate any card our opponent uses, assuming we have it in our main deck. Hence why we're playing most of our hand traps at 2 and one of them at 1 in order to keep down our number, while also maximizing the amount of targets that I expect to see. Lastly, we're playing the one of Harpy's Feather Duster, destroy all spell and traps your opponent controls, great for matchups like Phantasm Spiral, and then one Pot of Avarice. This helps us recycle our extra deck, seeing as we have two limited monsters down here in Zeus and Dryden, while also being able to help us gain advantage back while drawing two cards, even if we don't have to return cards to the main deck. Very, very broken. Lastly, we have three copies of Forbidden Droplet, a quick play spell that allows us to either send monsters, spells, or traps to the graveyard, select monsters on the opponent's field, have their attack, and negate their effects. And in response to the card's activation, your opponent cannot activate cards or the effects of cards with the same original type. So we can send a spent tanky and say a fractal that we don't need and be able to negate two of our opponent's cards while also not allowing them to respond the likes of a monster or a spell effect. They could uh, theoretically respond with something like a solemn judgment, uh, but you know, if the off chance we do have an infinite impermanence in hand against a back row deck that has one monster on the field, uh, I doubt that's gonna happen, but you know, it's still a good card. For the extra deck, we've got three copies of Lyralisk Recital Starling, and it is by far the most broken card in the deck. A non-once-per-turn searcher for the entire archetype. Once per turn, notably a soft once per turn, it doesn't say you can only activate Lyralisk Recital Starling's effect once per turn. Just a regular once per turn is soft, so in case you're curious as to what they mean by between soft versus hard. You can attach one material and add any one level one winged beast so if you do want to tech in something like a dd crow for an extra interruption on your opponent's turn you can definitely do that since you have more than enough materials most of the time in order to summon out both utopic draco future and ensemble robin speaking of utopic draco future we actually use two of our recital starlings in order to make utopic future which needs two exes monsters with the same rank and since these are both rank one we can make this then by using it as his material, we can upgrade into Utopic Draco Future, a monster negation tool that also steals the card if the thing that you're negating is on field. Not to mention, it also can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Quite frankly, this card is broken and any Xyz deck should be playing it in this format. As for the other two Lyralisk monsters we're playing in the extra, the first one we've got is Ensemble Robin, a staple for our turn one end board. This monster gains 500 attack for each material attached to it, and for every time your opponent special summons a monster, you can detach a material, target one of those special summon monsters, and return it to the hand. Notably, this is once again not once per turn, and we can normally load this thing up with about four materials before passing turn to our opponent, usually by using Barrel Canary summoning back Sapphire Swallow from Grave, then using Sapphire Swallow's secondary effect in Grave to attach either a Cobalt or a Turquoise Warbler inside of our graveyard, then using the effect of Celestine Wagtail, using it to target a Lyralisk Xyz monster we control and attach to it as material. 
For the last Lyralisk, we're playing Assembled Nightingale, a monster with the effect to prevent destruction by battle or card effects while also not being able to take damage. Pretty nice if I do say so myself. However, this can also attack multiple times equal to the number of materials it has, it gains 200 attack for each material, and because it can attack directly, it is a great bridge into Divine Arsenal AA Zeus Sky Thunder. We can also use Downard Magician to rank up off of the Assembled Nightingale for an extra material. Divine Arsenal AA Zeus is quite frankly ridiculous. Uh, once per turn, you can make this card by overlaying it on an Xyz monster you control, assuming an Xyz monster has battled this turn. In quick effect, you can detach two materials, send all other cards from the field of the graveyard, and notably that's not once per turn or once per chain, so if they try negating it, you can just do it again if you have enough materials. This card is quite frankly broken, and I understand why it's at 1. In the Zodiacs, we've got 1 Tiger Mortar, 1 Hammer Kong, 2 Chaka 9. This is the best one that we have outside of the limited Dryden, so I figured I'd play 2 of these. Since you want to be able to have something to detach for Dryden to pop your uh, opponent's cards on their turn, but you don't want to lose the attack and defense from the Zodiac main deck monsters. Ram Ram and Whiptail both have pretty effective uh, abilities too, since Ram Ram, when a, your opponent activates a trap card or effect that targets this card, you can detach a material from the card and negate the activation, so something like an infinite impermanence won't be able to affect it, and then Whiptail, when the monster battles and this is used as an Xyz material, you can actually banish the monster. You can out some relatively unoutable things by just bashing it with a Zodiac that just has his Whiptail on as material, and it's pretty fun. As for the other one we have, Borbo. Borbo is our mechanism in the Zodiac engine in order to hit directly. So it kind of serves the same purpose as Assembled Nightingale and helps us spit out four, six, and even eight material Zeus's on good days. Because a Dryden that you summon that doesn't get outed on your opponent's first turn when you go first and they go second, you can just stack up the rest of the Xyz monsters and go into Zeus in defense position and sit on an 8 material Zeus. Your opponent's not getting through that unless they have exactly an effect negation and a 1 card starter. And they're probably not gonna have it. Anyway, I find this deck really powerful and I'm looking forward to trying this challenge. So let's get into the first few games and see how we do. Our first match is against Raid Raptor, and is going to show the normal combo we're going to want to perform on the play, and should hopefully give viewers new to the game a good basis on what we're aiming for. We open Warbler Sparrow, as well as a normal summonable Zodiac, and a Called by the Grave, so we should be in pretty darn good hands. Since I control no monsters, we special summon the Warbler, then the Sparrow by its other effect in order to search Sapphire Swallow, then overlay for a copy of Resital Starling, and use its effect to search for a copy of Celestine Wagtail. We can special both the Sapphire Swallow and the Celestine Wagtail using the former's effect, getting a search for Bird Call while also giving us enough material to make a second copy of Recital Starling. I use it to search a copy of Barrel Canary, then overlay for a copy of Utopic Future and Draco Future. I figured this would be the best point to use Bird Call as well, grabbing a second Barrel Canary for next turn's follow-up, then using one of them to special summon it and Sapphire Swallow from Grave to overlay for a copy of Ensemble Robin. Sapphire Swallow's second effect triggers here, allowing me to attach another Lyralisk monster from Grave as material to our Ensemble Robin, then using Wagtail's second effect to attach itself to a Lyralisk monster as material, boosting Robin to 2200. Finally, a normal summon the Whiptail, overlay for Chaka 9, and finally Dryden. I figured I'd save the Hammer Kong for a potential Zeus, but upon seeing my opponent normal summon and activate Raid Raptor Call in the same column as my impermanence, I flip it up, targeting the monster and negating the effects of Call, and my opponent's already had enough. Crashing their monster into my Draco Future, taking 3000, passing turn, and giving us just enough to get in for over lethal. Our second match is against Ancient Warriors and is going to show what we can do on the draw while also showing the resources that we have for clearing boards going second. Our opponent starts off with a copy of Fire Formation Tensu, which gives them a second normal summon for the turn of a Beast Warrior monster, then normal summons Masterful Sunmo, sending a card from his hand to grab an Ancient Warrior monster from his deck, getting Lu Fang and special summoning it. He's going to set two cards and pass turn. Well, this is a little bit to work against. We've got a bounce, a pop, and a potentially live spell trap in our future, so let's take this carefully. We draw for turn, and oh dear lord, the third copy of Bird Call. 
then fire off Tanky to add a copy of Thoroughblade. We've got the full combo, so I use Bird Call to search for Turquoise, special summoning it to the field. I attempt to special the Cobalt, but they chain Lufang, popping my monster, but it still resolves, special summoning Cobalt. Since I'm turn player, my Sparrow is chain 1, and since they activated an Ancient Warrior's monster effect, Sunmo will be able to bounce my Cobalt back to hand, but fortunately for me, I can just search for a copy of Barrel, since it's not like it was negated, only bounced, giving me two Winged Beast monsters on the field for Sapphire's effect later. First though, I want to summon my Thoroughblade. By making Borbo before doing my Lyralisk Xyz plays, I can activate the first effect of Recital Starling and have it actually mean something, giving 300 attack and defense to any monster on the field times the number of materials attached to Recital. So I give Borbo 600 attack and defense before searching for a copy of Celestine Wagtail, then special summoning it to the field as well as Sapphire Swallow to make a second, targeting Borbo and boosting out up to 2900. I go for the search effect, but they chain Defensive Changbon. That's an awfully weird time to activate it. It can only be used in the battle phase, either at the start or when I declare an attack. So by preemptively flipping it up, I can overlay Dryden on top of my Borbo, pop in the trap, and making UDF before heading to the battle phase. Unfortunately, I do lose all of that attack boost that I got on Borbo, but that's fine. Of course, I've also never read these terrible cards that my opponent is playing in my life, so they banish the trap I popped in order to special summon Cow Day. Now, that's not really a problem. I wasn't intending on destroying anything else on the field after attacking with UDF, so I send Dryden into the defense position monster, and it has 100 more defense than Dryden has attack. Unfortunate, but not a problem. An Xyz monster battled this turn, and that's all I can ask for. Now in main 2, I can overlay Hammer Kong, Tiger Mortar, and then into Zeus for 5 materials. This should be plenty, and upon the activation of Tanky by our opponent on their turn, I chain, taking out his entire field, and leaving my Zeus with another activation. With an open board, it's time to make some stuff happen, though. I draw into Biru for turn, then activate Bird Call to search for Sapphire, specialing Cobalt with the other effect and grabbing myself a Warbler. Activating Barrel Canary, targeting the other in the grave, lets me rake another recital in the extra monster zone, targeting Zeus to give 600 more attack, then specialing both Sapphire and Turquoise, and on the activation of Turquoise, our opponent sees the writing on the wall and concedes. Our third game is against Burnstall, which seemed to be relatively popular over the course of the event, other than like the first day when everybody was just burning themselves because it was faster to get the points that way. God, what did Konami do? At least they fixed it. They set two back row and a monster and pass, so we draw for turn and get cracking. I special summon Turquoise, and here comes the Maximum Cock. Thankfully, we've got the Called by the Grave to negate this, though turning off our own Max C for next turn is slightly rough, but it probably doesn't matter. I special summon the Sapphire Swallow, making a Recital Starling in the attempt to grab a Barrel Canary so that I can make UDF, but an Ash Blossom puts a stop to that. So, resigned to the fate of Zeus, I normal summon Whiptail, overlay Borbo, and head to the battle phase, attacking him with Recital and using its effect to make our opponent take the same 500 damage we do from the battle, flipping up Marshmallon. The hell is this, 2005? When did we go back to GOAT format and I became a time-traveling wizard that warns everybody that this game is going to go over the heads of every single person at my OTS? Alas, I attack in directly for 1200, going to main 2 in order to overlay Tiger Mortar, Hammer Kong, Dryden, popping the Marshmallow on, Chaka 9, special summoning back the Dryden because I'm BMing at this point, making Zeus, and sending the board before setting Impermanent Passing. They top deck Swords of Revealing Light, and unfortunately for them, I can just send that after searching Barrel Canary off of my top deck Bird Call, making Ensemble Robin with 3 materials and attacking in for 4700. They've got one turn left, and what does our opponent top deck? Nothing apparently, we draw Thoroughblade, normal summon it, and attack in for exact lethal. Alright, so those were a few easy games. Do we have any hard games? Well, I can't say that this was hard, but it was certainly tedious. I've got a Sapphire, Ram Ram, Fractal, Avarice, and Imperm, so I can't make any Lyralisk plays. I just go ahead and fire Fractal, dumping Cobalt Sparrow, and normal summoning Ram Ram in order to overlay for Chocanine, Hammer Kong, and Dryden, setting Imperm in passing turn. Our opponent happens to be on Cyber Dragon, revealing this by normal summoning Core. Now, Core you cannot let resolve if you're playing against Cyber Dragon. Core is the most important card in the deck, and I don't want to let them go off, so I imperm this, and they chain Cyber Dragon Veer, sending one card, then passing. Alright, well, that's not terrible for me. I Dryden in the end phase, popping Veer as I top deck another Cobalt Sparrow. 
Can't do anything with this either, so I just dried and popped the remaining monster, then overlay for Chocanine to begin making a massive Zeus. As Torrential Tribute is flipped, well, I would have appreciated if you had waited at least till the end of the Xyz chain to do that, because now I've got to shuffle in a main deck monster with Ram Ram to activate Avarice. Drawing two is nice, but not when it's double droplet. I set Cobalt and a droplet, then pass, leading to our opponent doing an interesting, but overall really weird play. They banish Core from Grave to special summon Nashter from deck, then normal summon Cyber Valley. GX fan I see, but then we see the overlay of Slacker Magician in defense mode and passing turn. Why wouldn't you just go for Zeus? Either way, we get to keep our level 1 monster on board as the turn comes back to us and we top deck Whiptail. This is good, but I wanted to normal summon Sapphire to get the Lyralisk stuff going. We normal summon Whiptail and our opponent uses effect- Ah! I see that we're just clicking buttons. This does nothing. Why would you do this? I overlay for Borbo, head to the battle phase, and crash into the Slacker Magician, using Whiptail's effect to banish it before making a 6 material Zeus in main 2 and passing turn. The draw is Cyber Repair Plant, grabbing Cyber Eltanen of all things, and special summoning it by banishing all machines in the grave. Now this normally would be disastrous, as Eltanen is basically a one-time Zeus that can be summoned from hand, but thanks to Forbidden Droplet, I'm able to send my Sapphire Swallow, negate it, and move about my day. It goes to zero attack in the end phase, and I'm finally able to do something this turn. I use Zeus, send the board, and change it to attack position before committing to Thoroughblade. Overlaying Chaka 9 and heading to battle as Swift Scarecrow. Come on, man. I'm just trying to end the game. We pass and our opponent draws Raigeki. God, after we used our Pot of Avarice 2. Are you kidding me? That's it for his turn, though, as we top deck Tanky. Not too useful without any Zodiacs in the extra, but I can at least grab Fractal and attack for 2k damage. But no, we've got Performa Pal Curry Bobble in the deck so that our opponent gains life points when we destroy it, going up to 9700 as we pass yet again and they draw into Cyber Emergency. Now I can't really be upset at this one since they go for core and normal summon it and I just use my second droplet, sending Tanky to negate and not lose my monster, leading to them passing and me top decking yet another Tanky. Frustrating since like over half my deck turns on my entire Lyralisk engine, but that's fine. I normal summon, attack in for a bit of damage, then activate one of the Fractals in main 2 to send Celestine Wagtail in the random event that I draw into either Barrel Canary or Turquoise Warbler on an open field. I pass yet again and our opponent is finally able to do some damage. By using Core's effect and Grave, they can banish it to special summon Cyber Dragon Dry from their deck, then bring out his second Veer from hand that has been there for an eternity. This gives them enough to make a rank 4, and though they could have just gone into something good, you know, like Abyss Dweller or Baguska, instead they go for Kachi Kochi Dragon, a rank 4 that can attack twice if it A, destroys a monster by battle, and B, detaches a material. We're at 4900 and top deck Ash, not really good, but at least I can set Ash in the attempt to burn Kachi Kochi's last material, and it works as the normal summoned hers hits for an extra 100 damage. <laughs> and would you look at that, God is just smiling upon me, allowing a top deck of Turquoise Warbler, and this is where the fun begins. You've all seen the combo by now, special Turquoise, special Warbler, search Swallow, make Recital, search another Turquoise since we're only playing one Wagtail, make a second Recital, search for Barrel, make UDF, special Barrel and Sapphire, make Assembled Nightingale with four materials, giving us just enough to attack directly four times for a thousand damage each, then use UDF to attack over hers for game. Not bad at all, glad I managed to stall for long enough to finally draw a good card. See what I mean about not hard but tedious? Game 5, and we've got a great start going here first. Double Warbler, Barrel, Tanky, and Droplet. This is basically full combo. Though we are going to have to choose between whether or not we want Ensemble Blue or Drydent. I search Fractal since I want Ensemble Blue, and our opponent holds the Ash for the Fractal. Unfortunate, but we can still actually get to Ensemble Blue after thinking about the line here. Kind of wish I had realized that, but our opponent would have asked something more important if we didn't go for Fractal. By the end of the combo, we've ended on a 3 material Ensemble Blue Robin, a Draco Future, and a Forbidden Droplet, so we should be in good hands. Our opponent leads off with a Lightning Storm. Well, actually, they target our monsters. Guess they didn't read Ensemble Blue Robin. 
They really should have gone for the back row here in terms of profitability, getting at least a good card out of a one-for-one -one trade since Storm can pop the droplet and the now useless tanky, but by popping Ensemble Robin, it just floats back into Barrel Canary, giving me more material next turn and essentially making him Nagon cards. We see him actually going for Galaxy Soldier next, revealing that he's on Photon, but I never really get to see many of those cards as I negate the on-field effect with UDF stealing his monster and forcing him to pass turn with zero cards on his side of the field. With 5,000 damage already on board, you'd think that it would be easy to find lethal, but we're short of material in Grave for Assembled Nightingale. If we had a Celestine, we could, but alas, we'll have to be satisfied with 7,400 damage, making a format Zeus in main 2 in passing turn. Our opponent normal summons Ash Blossom, accepting their fate and crashing to perform lethal damage. We've got a great record so far. Let's see if we can keep it up with the last few of these interesting games. We're up against Numeron OTK and we've got full combo. I'm able to make UDF, a 4 material Ensemble Robin and Zodiac Dryden while also having a crossout designator and forbidden droplet at the helm. Though my opponent does attempt to use Numeron Wall to get network on board which seems weird, so I pop it in the end phase, pass turn, and immediately see Radiant come down over my UDF to special summon. He's off to the races with a second Numeron network thanks to a second Numeron wall. Pretty rough, but instead of the OTK, our opponent is going for Sunya, which reads, if this card is Xyz summoned, banish all monsters on the field during your next standby phase after this turn is banished, special summon this card, then if Numeron Network is in the field zone, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the combined attack of all banished Xyz monsters. Well then, I think we're gonna be in a world of hurt if we don't win on this turn exactly. We top deck a tanky, and this plus bird call is easily the end of the game. I can tanky for Thoroughblade, baiting any potential negation, then using bird call to grab Turquoise Warbler. I can bring out the Warbler, Special Sparrow from Grave, grab Barrel, use it to Special Summon's Sapphire Swallow from Grave, then make Assembled Nightingale with 4 materials, adding a 5th with Sapphire's effect and a 6th with Celestine's effect. A 1400 attack monster with 6 attacks, slamming him a bunch of times and winning the match, even not needing the Thoroughblade. Gotta love it. We've got 2 more games that I found interesting enough to show for this video since, oh boy, I didn't expect for this challenge to go by so well. By this point, I was already somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 wins and 4 losses, already clearing the challenge by that point, but I made it an extra gold and hit 90%. Can we do it? Well, let's find out. We're up against yet another Photon player, however this time I get to do an interesting combo. I don't have enough birds, but somehow I have too many Zodiacs, but I have just the thing to do with them. See, when Dryden was legal in the TCG back in 2020, people were experimenting with the deck and learned that Dryden and Ram Ram are great in being able to help spam the board with three Xyz monsters exactly, giving you plenty enough material to make the Link 3 Infinite Track Fortress Megaclops. However, we don't have Link monsters, but what we do have is Utopic Draco Future. By normal summoning Thoroughblade, we can ditch this copy of Ram Ram searched off of this tanky, draw a card, then overlay for Hammer Kong and Chalkanine. Chalk can bring back the Ram Ram, then overlay Dryden for Chalk and Nine to pop Ram Ram, which activates the destruction effect to revive a Zodiac from the grave, so I bring back Chalk and Nine, and by using Tiger Mortar's effect to tuck a material under an Xyz monster, so we can use the soft once per turn wording that Chalk and Nine has to revive yet another Zodiac monster from our grave, this time choosing Dryden. Now, I wish Tanky wasn't once per turn, otherwise I'd slap that second one down in heartbeat to grab Whiptail and have material for Dryden to pop something next turn, but alas, I'm gonna have to make do with Draco Future and a zero material Dryden along with a called by. He's gonna start with Galaxy Soldier. We let him special summon, then negate the on-field effect to prevent a search and to steal his monster for a rank 5. He follows it up with a Photon Sanctuary though, summoning two tokens for some reason, since you can't use tokens for an Xyz material, but that gives him a monster to equip Photon Orbital to, so I suppose that's a good use for it. Thankfully, as he sends the equip card to the grave for cost, I'm able to respond with Called by the Grave to negate his search effect, and... Uh... Why was he able to resolve that? Huh. Leave the answer down in the comments. I can not for the life of me figure this one out. Other than maybe the fact that it's considered either a spell or a trap, and therefore can't be negated by Called by the Grave. I don't know. We see Photon Vanisher search, special summoning itself to search Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, then tributing both tokens to special summon it. Not too bad, and they actually attack UDF in order to banish it until the end phase, getting rid of all Xyz material in the process. 
That's a pretty sick play. Too bad I have a Zeus and material for Dryden. Sadly, I'm a bit too late on the Dryden, though, as he reveals Galaxy Eyes Afterglow Dragon, which needs a Photon Dragon on field to activate. So I thought, hey, let me pop this card that he needs to have on field to summon this, then the card will resolve without effect like the Virtual World cards do. And yet again, I'm proven wrong by Rogue cards, as they seem to do things that other cards don't normally do. Either way, it doesn't end up mattering in the end as he fires off Galaxy Trance, especially in both a Galaxy Eyes from Grave and Deck, but they get Zeus away before a rank 8 it can hit the board. This puts me in a fantastic position, top decking Barrel Canary is literally the best thing I could have happen here, as I can use that to special the Cobalt in Grave, grab Sapphire Swallow, use that and the Cobalt in Hand to special both, then use all four materials for an assembled Nightingale, getting a fifth material from Fractal, dumping a Turquoise Warbler, and Sapphire Swallow's second effect, attaching it, giving us 6,000 damage from Assembled in 5 attacks per game. Didn't even need the Zeus. And now for the last game. I'm 45 and 4, so I have at least hit the 90% win rate that I was hoping for. But can I uphold it and get a 92% win rate? Well, against Phantasm Spiral, I might have a bit of an issue. We've opened relatively okay, but upon seeing Pacifist set 4 pass, I know we're in for a really rough game, they open broken, especially compared to what I have in hand. Double Droplet and Nibiru are pretty much dead in this matchup, and I can't do much bird combo with only one bird. So naturally, I cycle a card with Thoroughblade, which immediately gets hit with Morella to get flipped face down, and I do draw into an Ash though, so that may come in handy. I set a Droplet and pass, seeing the Phantasm Spiral Battle come down to pop my Thoroughblade before the turn change. Well, that's rough, especially when I see the level 8 2000 attack token hit the board. Our opponent draws and sees a copy of C Stealth Attack, chaining Canadia in Grave to special it as a monster. This also triggers Pacifist in order to search, but I'm not allowing my opponent to get even further ahead than they already are. So I drop the Ash, taking 3200 damage as my opponent passes turn. I top deck Bird Call, and that might be what I need as he chains C Stealth Attack. Banishing the token to protect his back row, then on the summon of Warbler, he negates it with Spiral Power. That sucks, but that's honestly great. Though the advantage he gets off of this engine is insane, another token hits the field and another Spiral Paddle comes out of the deck before I can normal summon Cobalt, then make Recital Starling. And because of this, he can't target Recital thanks to Cobalt Sparrow's second effect, making it so that Xyz monsters summoned using Cobalt cannot be targeted with card effects, and Spiral Battle happens to target. Though, he does pop the back row. Not sure probably why he did that. He probably should have held it for the second recital, Starling. But either way, I search Barrel Canary and special the Cobalt for the first time this turn, getting the search for a Sapphire Swallow, then using the second recital to grab Celestine. This is going for a third monster, making Assembled Nightingale, then UDF, going to the battle phase. This effectively plays around Spiral Power, since UDF is just able to attack into the token to get it off board, and even if it's chained here like it is, that also forces the C stealth attack if he wants any chance of defending himself. Alas, Assembled Nightingale is still able to hit for 1800 damage directly, and since I'm not taking any chances with his cards, I skip Downward Magician and go straight into the format Zeus, sending the field except for Morella since it's immune to monster effects, sending Droplet, and passing turn. Our opponent basically is boned now with a back row deck against the Zeus that can still activate, so he just bumps his Morella into Zeus to take 1800, accelerating our clock so that we can Zeus in the end phase, sending the entire field and doing one last bird combo for game. One very large bird combo that leads into the Tribute Summoning of Nibiru, since for some reason there's a Steam achievement for Tribute Summoning in Ranked and Event Duels, and I gotta get it. And that's that. I ended my run with a record of 46 and 4, a 92% win rate. That's fantastic for the first time I've attempted a challenge like this, and I'd love to attempt something like it again with other archetypes in the normal ranked ladder, the future festivals like the Fusion and Synchro Festival, as well as even the Pokemon TCG Live that just released in Canada. But what about the deck? Well, I really enjoyed it. Uh, initially, I was stumped by what I wanted to play for this event. I wanted to try Drytron as a rank 1 spam deck, but with both Herald of Ultimateness and Perfection as well as Drytron Meteonis Drake in its band, 
I tried Virtual World, which I didn't realize just how much they relied on Synchro Monsters. Without them, that you can only get one level 9 on board, and you can't really make True King of All Calamities with only one level 9. So I passed on that, but third time's the charm, and I'm really happy how this turned out. Uh, both engines synergize really well without Link Monsters and make a very powerful board for this format. But that said, if you'd like to try out this deck, well, the Xyz Festival is ending soon, but both Lyralisk and Zodiac are independently great decks, and uh, I will be leaving a link to Master Duel meta in the description so that you can take a look for yourself. It's got a tier list for all the best decks, and it has deck lists for anything you want. If you want pure Zodiac, you want Zodiac Tri Brigade, if you want Tri Brigade Lyralisk, any of this stuff you'll likely find a good deck profile for, and it will likely be meta. I assure you, it's worth your time, and if you play your cards right, you won't have to spend a single penny to get a really good meta strategy. I hope you try to give this game a shot, and I'll see you next time.